Yep, we're doing a top 10 on this. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 outrageous things in South Park, the fractured but whole. Oh, hey, who pooped on my porch? Hey, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to check out WatchMojo's new series, The Worst Travel Show, hosted by me, Kyle Gatehouse. Click this link below to watch it on Facebook. I can't wait to be famous. For this list, we're looking at some of the craziest moments in the new South Park game, from the side splitters to the slightly offensive to the full-on gross-out shocking moments. Number 10, Steven Stotch. I think there's something supernatural going on. I asked my dad why I was being grounded, and he said that for asking him that I was more grounded. It doesn't make sense! Poor little Butters has been grounded for so many reasons, so much so that he's psychologically dramatized. Luckily, he's got the new kid by his side to stand up to his dad. It, it wasn't me, Dad, it was the new kid! You have some kind of ability to unground people? The boss battle against Steven Stotch is a special one because every attack deals not just damage, but he can also ground your allies, rendering them immobile until the new kid can unground them. Almost every dialogue bit from Steven has something to do with grounding, actually. Hell yeah, I'm ungrounded! Hey, you're supposed to stay grounded! It might not be an incredibly difficult boss fight, but it's too damn hilarious to forget. I mean, who didn't dream of a fight like this when your parents grounded you? Damn it, butters, you're grounded for life! I, I, I am, but I don't feel grounded. Hey guys, I'm not grounded! I'm ungroundable! Number 9, Fart Powers. Hmm. Hell yes! In the stick of truth, fart powers took the role of what typical RPGs would call mana, acting as invisible fireballs or dragon shouts. This time around, your fart powers take on a more serious ability, the power to manipulate time and space. With these gaseous powers, you can pause time, skip enemy turns, fast forward day and night cycles, or even create a clone of yourself. Tacos and Enchiritos have never been deadlier, well, outside of diseases and all that stuff. Of course, there's no one more fit to teach you the ways of the waft than Morgan Freeman. You've gotten stronger, new kid. I'll give you that. Number 8. Microaggressions Did you or did you not say that this man seemed tired? Yes, he's my friend. I said, Paolo, you look tired. Microaggression! Ah, ah, ah. Remember PC Principal? Sure you do, if you've been watching the show since season 19, of course. He may not have as big of a role as marketing led us to believe, but he's still important in the game. When you first enter Crunchy's microbrew, PC Principal will teach you how to spot microaggressions. At first, it seems like this moment is just a one-time joke. However, this gives you the advantage in scoring free hits in future encounters. As little bonuses, you'll receive a Coonstagram post from PC Principal explaining what the microaggression technically was. Hey, who said PC culture couldn't mix with violent video games? Remember, kid, people use microaggressions every day. I'm counting on you to make them pay for doing so. Number seven, the summons. Let all debts be forgiven and all slaves free. Mwah. Character summons are back and they're crazier than ever. As if Stick of Truth summons weren't walking the wire of weirdness with the likes of Mr. Slave, Jesus, Mr. Kim, and Mr. Hanky, we have four brand new summons this time around. Using a Star of David macaroni art, you can summon Moses to heal your allies. Walkie talkies can call in Jimbo and Ned to unload all of their weapons onto your enemies and finish them off with a grenade. A totally cheesed out Gerald Broflowski will carpet bomb the battlefield, and then we have Kolathi, who simply commits a hit and run, or vehicular manslaughter if you actually manage to kill anyone. That's right, bitch, you dead! Number 6, The Rednecks. Well, 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 if it ain't a cisgendered boy! These days, it can feel like so many people are judging you for living your life just the way you want to. This is not a topic that South Park would ever shy away from, as evident throughout Fractured But Whole. In the handful of times you edit your ethnicity and sexuality from your character sheet, you'll be greeted by a trio of racist rednecks. It actually doesn't matter if you choose to be straight, gay, bi, white, black, Latin, Middle Eastern, or whatever, because these guys will be waiting outside regardless of your choice. It's a pretty smart take on addressing prejudice and discrimination, but what makes it outrageous is how frequent it occurs. Huh, you'd think these rednecks would learn. We've got ourselves a cisgender, heterosexual, white, Italian, Lawful. Christian. Dang, Cletus, why are you talking like that? Dialogue tree. Number five, Morgan Freeman. Welcome to Freeman's Tacos. If there's anything I can interest you in, well, you just let me know. You wouldn't pick a fight with God, would you? Okay, so what about someone who's played God? If you thought you were able to breeze through all of the bosses, just try and beat Morgan Freeman. 
You're digging your own grave, kid. Man, he's not joking. Morgan Freeman is not just a secret boss, but he's the hardest boss in the entire game, clocking in at 9,999 HP and using a fatal fart that covers half the grid. Our advice is to craft a hell of a lot of revive serums. Use any summons you can, maximize your might, and make sure you have every fart power. This near 20 minute boss battle will be a rough one. Listen to my heavenly voice and gaze upon my freckles. Congratulations, you've just been Freeman. Number four, Kanye? Psst, kid, over here. I've been watching you, and I believe we can help each other. Trey Parker hinted at this joke way back at E3 2015, shortly after Kanye West revealed his own game. While we knew about this mission two years before release, we didn't expect it to be quite this insane. Just as Parker describes it, a little gay fish needs the new kid's help to get his mama into heaven. As you progress through the Flappy Bird-esque minigame, the difficulty quickly amps up. Obstacles come at you faster, and a demon starts spitting fireballs at you. WTF? At least the game gives you health boosts out of pity upon each death. Now, if only we could get Kanye to understand that fish sticks joke. You had no reason to help this little gay fish, my child. And yet, you did. Kid had every reason to help me. I'm a lyrical genius, voice of a generation. Number three, pooping minigames. Leave it to South Park to provide as much toilet humor as possible, but we're not really complaining. These poop minigames are everywhere. I mean, there's a toilet in every home, isn't there? Every minigame has its own difficulty, with some toilets requiring more convoluted button pressing patterns than others. If the ridiculous concept alone doesn't sell you, maybe a trophy or an achievement will tempt you to take a dump in every toilet. Yes, that is correct, mastering every toilet will earn you an achievement for your online profile. Get busy crapping or get busy dying. Right, Morgan Freeman? With an enchilada and a burrito, you've crafted an injurito. That's the first time anyone's ever done that. Number two, pedophile priests. I haven't seen you before, but you come at a crucial time. Uh, no, no, we don't want God's love this way. Okay, so let's get this entry over with. To help conquer your fears, Father Maxi places you in the church storage room, where you'll find a couple of other priests that start making some uncomfortable gestures. Father Maxi has unfortunately locked you inside, so there's no other way out of this fight but to fight. Thankfully, this room is actually a tutorial for how to dodge charge attacks, so it's actually a pretty easy fight to win. I mean, it should be, right? Oh god, what's attached to that crucifix? Are those? Ugh, keep moving, keep moving, next entry. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hey, Tom Brady, you wanna play the game or do you just wanna be known as a smug cheating bitch the rest of your life? I'll let you hold on the gross stuff, psychic. Don't worry, this doesn't affect combat, just every other aspect of your whole life. Number one, the Peppermint Hippo. There are sure to be unsavory characters and lots of boobies inside. Come on, let's go inside. The fractured butthole has proven to be just as outrageous, if not more than Stick of Truth. But the moment that epitomizes this the most is the Peppermint Hippo. Think about it, a couple of fourth graders break into a strip club, give the DJ a poisoned drink, fight off strippers. Oh, and dare we mention that you're mistaken for a stripper and must give a middle-aged man the gassiest lap dance of his life? Also, don't ask us what we put in the drink. At this point, those who are sensitive to South Park's humor had probably stopped playing. But for the rest of us, this was still a night of cringing, face palming, and crying from laughter. Mostly at the same time. Oh shit, my boner is weighing me down. Yeah, all I did was get farted on. Hey, this is Kyle Gatehouse, host of Watch Mojo's new series, The Worst Travel Show. Click the link below to watch it on Facebook. For more great videos published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.